In today's video, we're gonna go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. Layout of our capital. Yeah. Like if you look at where all the buildings are lined up, the you, pentagram. it's a pentagram. Yeah. 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 So crazy. Some fountain in Arkansas that's literally just in the middle of the town square and it's this goat head, Aww. this guy with a goat head, and all of these animals circled around it. I haven't seen this. Yeah, it's absolutely wild but it's like why are we doing this it's what's like, up with that outside of the christian faith I'll also probably look at like jesus on a cross and like that's kind of morbid i also thought it was so weird the connection of the symbolism of the eagle and like you look at all these past empires and stuff that have the eagle as their symbol yeah it's like the u.s um didn't ancient the, rome the nazis the nazis yeah. and mm-hmm. it's like that's just a weird connection there. There's a lot of stuff with a whole CERN statue. Like, yeah, yeah. What are we doing? It's the symbolism. It's wild. And symbolism is really, what is the, what is the study of something when you go back to like the root of the beginning of it? I know things lose meaning over time. So maybe the pine cone doesn't have any meaning now, but it's like it did at one point. Yeah. I really feel like big organizations are onto some kind of symbolic ritual, whether it's Satanism or some kind of sacrificial religion. There's something going on because there's way too many coincidences to symbolize all of these things. They got statues of destroyer gods. They have all of these buildings placed into a pentagram shape. Very odd coincidence if it's not. It just makes me wonder, why would they do it so openly if knowing people are going to figure this stuff out and start talking about it? Wouldn't that cause more of a problem than not? I'll never understand being on that wealthy status because that's probably something that's just way above me and I'll never get. It just baffles me that it's so up in our face. The next two videos are from a young man who works at a convenience store, at a liquor store. And he has been documenting the shadow entity, demonic being that has been literally tormenting him night after night. It's escalated. Take a look at his videos and tell me what you think. You know, come on, man. Oh, I'm not fucking playing. Oh, my God. What the fuck? He said, oh. mm, there's nobody in this fucking store, dude. It's freaking me out, bro. It's freaking me out, bro. Come on. Where you at? Like, come on. Bro, you go sit here and show yourself. Show yourself in front of me. All right, guys. So I'm hearing this door open and close again. And, you know, I'm the only one. Bro, bro, what the fuck is that? Oh shit. Ow. Bro, I just got pushed, bro. Ah, my arm hurts. Oh, come on, bro. Nobody in here? Ow, dude, I'm not doing this no more. Mama out, bro. I'm gone. I gotta go. Yeah. This girl just posted that she was shopping at walmart at like seven o'clock at night and this employee came up to her and said hey um what kind of car do you have and she was like a toyota and he said oh is it silver and is this the license plate he was on the phone with somebody and they read the license plate and she was like yeah and he was like okay your car is getting towed and she was like why and she just parked in a regular parking lot and he said because we're starting this policy this week that We're just leaving some spots for premium members of Walmart or something. And she was like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, there's no signs, whatever. They were going on and on. He was trying to get all this information out of her. And he was on the phone with this guy. And he was like, well, they're going to tow it. And then the guy on the phone said, it's unlocked. I'm just going to steal it. And the guy was like, he's kidding. Like, he's not going to steal it. And she was like, what is going on? So then, thank God, her gut instinct wasn't to go outside and check for her car she stayed in and just questioned the guy and then luckily this other man stepped in because this kid ended up being really obnoxious and he was the employee the the employee yeah the employee kept um talking about her car whatever and then he was like all right fine we won't tow it he was like but you're really cute and then started flirting with her and she was Uh. like she's like what so then this other customer stepped in and said hey man like she said leave her alone so uh he walked away And then he was like, by the way, I didn't tow it. You're welcome. And she was like, what? So her gut went to another employee. She went to customer service and she told them the whole scenario. The manager comes forward and he said, that's not one of our employees. (gasps) Uh. They said they've had kids come in 
same scenario. They have the vest with the name tag and everything. Oh. And they're trying to lure girls to their car. Oh, wow. And then, so the manager ended up walking her out to her car. You got to be on the lookout nowadays. You have to be extremely careful and always use precaution with any scenario nowadays because that could have easily convinced someone that someone was out there about to tow their vehicle, especially if they're walking up in an employee outfit. So whenever someone does that, you should always ask for a supervisor or someone at the front desk to also advise and help with the situation, not just do it all alone with just one employee, just in case anything like this happens. So just be on the lookout. Hey guys, check this video out. What we're looking at here is footage of a family's home security system. This is taken in the United States, North Carolina at 1.30 in the morning. When the owners of the home woke up in the morning and they got a notification on their phone, this is the video that showed up. And what we have here is a creature walking up on two feet, some type of, some type of cryptoid creature. Now, the only thing I know that walks on two feet is a human being and probably a monkey and other animals. But we've never seen anything this small. Some people are calling this an alien. Others are calling it a mythical creature. But what could this possibly be, guys? Comment below. Don't forget to follow and repost the video. Thanks for watching, guys. On October 25th, 2024, a very famous musician will come out and announce that they faked their death. Now this is gonna get crazy, so stick with me. So of course there's a lot of predictions for 2024, and I've made a lot of videos about this sort, who is Baba Vanga. Now Baba Vanga is a very famous mystic who died in the 90s at age 99. She has an alarming accuracy rate of predictions of over 85%. She's had a lot of predictions for 2024, and predictions for like, the rest of time. She even predicted that she would die of cancer in the 90s, like 20 years before. Calm down love. And yeah, quite a few of her predictions for 2024 have already started coming true, such as economic crises all across the world, an increase in war in the Middle East, great. Now, her, along with a lot of other mystics, who might just be copying her, but we'll see, have said that on October 24th of this year, a very famous musician will come out and say that they faked their death for one reason or another. Now, apparently this musician is extremely, extremely famous and well-known, and is said to be a legend of their time. And of course, there's got a lot of curiosity sparking online of people saying, what is going on? Probably not gonna happen, but if it does, who is it gonna be? Now, the most popular ideas of who it's gonna be is Michael Jackson, Tupac, or Juice World. Now, I have made videos before about how Michael Jackson could be alive and how people believe that. Very quickly recapping, there was CCT evidence of someone getting out the back of an ambulance and just walking into a place where he supposedly died in that ambulance, and it was the same ambulance, the number plates and everything matched up, so he was in there, and someone walked out, just whether or not it was him, but it's pretty nuts if you look at the video. But, this is all just predictions, of course, from Baba Vanga, but with an 85% accuracy rate, you know, there's a good chance it could happen. So yeah, let me know in the comments down below who you think this could be, hit that follow button and come back on October 24th and we'll see what happens. So let's take a guess right down in the comments who do you think it's going to be if anyone. Leave a comment saying you do not believe or leave a comment on who you believe it's going to be. I have a theory if the prediction comes true it's going to be an artist that basically had to fake their death because of the P Diddy situation. And now that that's all getting situated and P. Diddy is on the run and all have you, this person that is in hiding can now come out safely without worrying about P. Diddy or whoever it was that was after them to get them. That's just a guess that I have. But who is the artist going to be? That's a good question. Leave a comment down below letting me know your guess. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And to everyone that's subscribed to the channel, thank you so much for being a part of the channel. And to the people that are not subscribed, I still appreciate you nonetheless, thank you for watching. And don't forget, if you wanna be a part of Questions for DK, where I answer personal questions, questions about conspiracy theories or theories in general, leave a comment starting with Question for DK so that I can answer those questions in a future video.
If you look at the Pyramid of the Sun located in Bosnia, these are European pyramids that nobody's really talking about. There's a valley there with pyramids in the entire valley. It seems to be like four or five pyramids, massive. There's one called the Pyramid of the Sun. We discovered that th there's tunnels underground that connect all these pyramids there. And in one of those tunnels going to the Pyramid of the Sun was a gigantic crystal called the K2 Megalith Crystal. And written on it is this writing in runes, which we've been able to decipher, oh. ancient Norse writing. Uh, and it says, we must stand in defense until we can open the Stargate. So we know that this stone, this giant crystal is there. We have, you know, anyone can look it up. It's available. It's public, publicly available knowledge. And the writing and the deciphering of it is publicly available. They're saying that we have a Stargate and we're defending. There's a war going on. This is one of those pyramid wars. We can't go through the gate until we defend it because there's something going on here. I guess that maybe there was some time that they had a delay. Maybe it was broken. Maybe it was damaged with some type of a weapons fire. But they were trying to fix it so they, so they, so they can escape through the gate. The Stargate most likely is somewhere underneath the pyramid or maybe inside the heart of the pyramid itself. And there are so many more accounts of pyramids being portals in ancient texts that state that the gods would go into these pyramids and they would vanish. And they would vanish for years. And they would reappear somewhere else, sometimes on Earth. Sometimes, according to the text, they would reappear on other planets. Why haven't we made contact with aliens yet? This is the reason why. One of the biggest questions is, is there alien life out there? And if there is, why haven't we made contact with them yet? Because surely we must have done. Well, there's a few different possible explanations, so let me know in the comments down below which one you think is the truth, because it's got to be one of them. First of all, it's known as the zoo theory. Basically, that the aliens see Earth and us as like an attraction and a zoo in their bigger zoo. It's off limits. They genuinely don't want to come here, but they are just free to observe and let us do what we're going to do. Next is the great filter theory. Basically, the theory that all other intelligent life died in mass extinctions, we are definitely the next in line. Then we have the Great Silence, which is pretty damn terrifying. The aliens believe that they are literally just far more advanced and more powerful than us, therefore we just aren't even worth their time, can't even be bothered essentially. This also links in with the incubation theory which is genuinely terrifying, which basically suggests yeah, they're not really interested in us at the moment, but they're waiting for us to develop until a certain point in our evolution, so we're you know advanced enough to their liking, that they will then just come and take us all and use us as slaves, and maybe even harvest us for certain things, so yeah, brilliant. That's absolutely Absolutely great. This footage was first posted to YouTube in 2020 and also picked up by multiple media sources. The reason being is this man, Brian, he was out walking the woods near Devon, England, when he came across what he claims to be a UFO crash landing site. Now, as you take a look, the whole site itself has been flattened. It truly has been flattened by something. What that something is, we don't know. He states that while he was investigating, he, it felt eerie. He heard weird noises, and he also felt like he was being watched. The interesting part about all of this is that several weeks later, he goes back to investigate the same area, and he finds a chest. And inside was an AI robot, female companion, that he eventually he gives to the museum, and they now use it for education on, on children's, children's classes. This whole case, this whole situation was bizarre from beginning to end. Did Brian really find a UFO crash landing site? Take a look at this and tell me what you think. Something's definitely crashed here. Look at this. Weird. Massive gap in the ocean, in the woods. Were all the trees bent? My garage door is all the way up. Literally. Oh my god. Oh my god. They're watching out for us. Yeah. There's no people walking in the road and stuff. So they're watching out for us. What just happened? You can't see nothing. Look how foggy it is. Oh my god. Look at this. This is something you see like out of a movie or something you think would never happen to you. I hear dogs walking here the dog. I hope the dogs okay. The gate on that fence just can't look at that yard. Oh my god. 
the house, look how the, look at the house is tore up. It's like the hell was just hitting and chipping it. If you look closely. This, this black man, how he's damaged, he needs to fall. What? Yeah, the other day in Rock Hill, South Carolina, really close to somewhere where I live, we had a horrible storm that went by, and they had golf ball-sized hail. It was pretty crazy and very out of the norm. We don't get that kind of weather like this very often. We definitely get storms during the season, but nothing that induces hail like that because that, that was some large damaging hail. And the thunder and lightning were just intense. Is there anyone near South Carolina that dealt with this? Because this was damaging. And I'm sorry for anyone that had to go through it. So do you remember the blue alien beings that Ross Coulthard spoke about about six months ago? Take a quick look at this and I'll explain something to you. Talking to people at the moment. And this is creepy. But people at the moment who are contacting me. And I've had three do it now from all over the world who say... They've, they've felt an urge to contact me and they tell me that they've communicated with a blue being that has imbued them and downloaded them with information. And in one case, the person developed an ability to instantaneously understand physics equations, highly complex mathematics. And um, I've seen them do it. I, I can't explain it. But so they could there, bring that information, there, that information came back into the real, quotes, the real world. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, 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 and, and it's weird because um, this blue being thing keeps on coming up. I don't know whether you've ever heard of that, Nick, but um, I'm, I'm shocked by how often in a lot of the uh, literature, because I've been reading the books about all of this, trying to catch up with your work. And um, it's, it's interesting to me that... Um, at the heart of all of this, when you look at people like Nikola Tesla, Francis Crick, who invented the, the double helix DNA, you know, all of these great thinkers and scientists, so often they describe what they say happened to them that gave them the inspiration. It, it came to them in a dream, mm -hmm. or they had a moment of inspiration, or some of them actually used the words download. They had a download. And do you remember the James Fox picture where he shared a silhouette of a whistleblower in the, in a corridor? That person is Jason Sands. Jason Sands is going to be the person in the documentary who will be going through the blue being and how he, they download things to human beings to give him epiphanies, basically, and to come up with these fantastic creations. So this is just a little video just to tell you that Jason Sands is going to be the one that's on James Fox, and he's going to be most certainly telling you about the blue beings and also a lot of other stuff, as well as another... Uh, there's another couple of other whistleblowers that are supposed to be on there, but I think Jason Sands is going to be the main one. What do they need to know that you have found out? Everything is decided by a, a quite small group of men who decide who will be an MP, who will be a minister, when that minister's career will crash by pulling various levers, who will be prime minister and how long they will remain prime minister. And of course, Conservative Party voters and people who go to the ballot box think their vote matters. It doesn't matter at all because this stuff is all pre-decided. Some of them are names, you know, Michael Gove, Dominic Cummings, as I've said, Cummings is Gove and Gove is Cummings. They've worked together side by side for well over 20 years. Um, Dougie Smith is, you know, you'll only find one photograph on the internet of Dougie Smith. He is right now at Rishi's right-hand side as his main advisor. You know, this is a man who used to run the fever sex parties who has quite a notorious... Um, you know, well-known background, but you won't hear anybody talk about Dougie Smith. When I ask people about Dougie Smith, they would say to me, I don't want to talk about him, and put their hand over my phone. And I wonder if you'll permit me to gallop through the working day of the average Englishman. He wakes up, and he turns on his taxed telly to get the news. He leaves his heavily taxed house, gets in his heavily taxed car, he fills it with heavily taxed diesel... He gets to work to earn an income, which after income tax, employer and employer national, employee national insurance, a third of his income has disappeared. A third. He drives home and stops on the high street for a few articles for the house. His purchases are taxed at 20%. He calls in for a pint. 
over two-thirds of the cost of which goes in tax. He dreams of a family holiday abroad, but he can't afford the airport tax. He longs for the day that he can retire, but the politicians won't let him go. We must steal his savings, mustn't we? The financial transaction tax. The poor sap doesn't even know we've nicked it. Of course, with the Commission, top salaries, income tax-free, non-contributory pension schemes, it's difficult for you, isn't it, to imagine his distress, because you're not in this game, are you? Right there. Did you see that? I'm going to go back because if you don't slow it down, you miss it. But watch this right behind Russell's cameraman right there, right there. You sort of see this amorphous blob move behind him. I don't know what the hell that is. That could be a video distortion or something. But to me, I think we just captured a cloaked Bigfoot. I did not expect it to say a cloaked Bigfoot. That threw me off. That was a surprise. So apparently this is from a show called Expedition Bigfoot. Never heard of it, never seen it. Let me know in the comments of what you think of this show. Is it something that you've seen before? Is it actually worth watching? Because I thought they were talking about aliens for the longest time until he said that there was a cloaked Bigfoot. Then I was like, what? You were able to get away with a sample of Element 115. How much did you get away with? No comment nighttime test flights unofficially while off the base what did you see the test flights i saw off the base actually the the best test flight was witnessed by my friends who i had brought out there I, at the uh, exact moment the craft was hopping around and doing some really impressive maneuvers i had turned around and i think was uh, looking for the video camera or, or something to that effect but i missed some of the most uh, impressive maneuvers but the craft was uh, similar to what was done before that I had seen close up, other than the fact that it went above the mountain range, uh, moved a, a much greater distance at a much higher rate of speed. How were you able to find out about the test flight schedules? The test flight schedules were told to me uh, specifically because I was probably going to have to be present during those times. And at that time, the test flights were taking place on Wednesday nights. And from what they said, that was because that was uh, statistically the least amount of traffic in the area. And that's uh, all that they were concerned about. Does the propulsion system release any sort of discharge or exhaust? There was a high voltage discharge on the bottom of the craft, but uh, as far as there being an exhaust, there was none. Why did they appear as glowing balls of light in the night sky? Well, that's kind of the same reason why a neon light or a fluorescent light lights up. What you're dealing with with as a high energy source in essentially a gas atmosphere, oxygen, nitrogen. And uh, when you apply enough energy to a gas molecule, they emit photons, they emit light. And uh, I don't think it's anything, it, it's a, really a byproduct of how the craft operates. When it's a, emitting that much energy, the gas surrounding the craft emits light. The same reason why lightning is visible. You have a huge electrical discharge and the gas emits light in the form of lightning bolt. If you were going to see one of these crafts at night operating, it would appear really as a glowing ball or a, just a bright light in the sky from a distance. Even close up, you know, you'd see a, a glowing halo around it. This is typically what you'd see in your normal UFO sighting, uh, if you've heard them a lot. However, keep in mind that lights in the sky are caused by much more common things than flying saucers. Tell us a little more about the aurora you witnessed taking off out of Area 51. It was a large craft, and the one glimpse I got of it was from the rear, and it had two huge square exhausts with vanes in them. And uh, it was just, it sounded more like a rocket than a jet. I don't know. I even think he did mention that it was liquid methane powered, but um, there again, you know, working on the disc technology, I really could care less what was rolling around at Area 51, but uh, it, it, it did catch my eye. As a result of going public, have there been any attempts made on your life? One day when I was getting on um, Interstate 15, driving down Charleston Boulevard, uh, a car came up alongside of me, and uh, I thought he was just trying to race me to get on the freeway. 
this was after I had left the project. It was a white, boxy-looking car, exactly what make and model, I don't know. But um, I accelerated to get on the freeway to go fast, and there was a gunshot, and the back of the car was hit, and I skidded off into the uh, median. And I stopped, and I was frightened, and I just stood there because I thought the guy was going to be alongside of me and just shoot me. I had nothing to do. I was essentially paralyzed with with fear, and I waited there, and then nothing else happened. And do I know it was a government agent trying to kill me? No. Could it have been a drive-by shooting? Maybe. Uh, was it, I mean, it was an attempt on my life, but by who specifically, I, I don't know. Though I was threatened uh, before I had left that they threatened my wife's life and my life, so I can only put two and two together and say that they were kind of pissed at me. In an earlier interview, you had mentioned that they had put a gun to your head. Tell us about that. That was after we were caught out when I had the test flight schedule, and uh, I brought some friends out to show them the disc test. Uh, we got caught out there, and the following day I was debriefed down at Indian Springs Air Force Base. I was in the room with the security guards that caught us, my supervisor and some other people and uh, some other security personnel. Yeah, they were essentially grilling me about security and, you know, how could I possibly bring people out there? And I guess I wasn't as responsive as they would like, and they got in my face, and one of them pulled a sidearm out and yeah. just pushed it against me. Have you maintained any contacts with your colleagues out at S4? No, I never heard from anyone other than for a very brief time. After I left, Dennis, who was my supervisor, did try and make contact with me at the uh, the meeting place was the Union Plaza Hotel, and I took a, a friend of mine, Gene Huff, down there, and another friend, uh, a former colleague and scientist from Los Alamos, and we did uh, we saw him, but I also did recognize some security personnel walking around there from S4. So whether or not it was a setup or what was going on, or was trying to talk to me. We never found out, and we left. It just was a, a real strange situation. I never heard from him since. Man, Bob Lazar has really been through a lot over the decades. And the fact that he's been talking about Element 115 before it was even put on the table is pretty impressive, and that should give a little bit of insight that what they're talking about might not necessarily be false. It's also a really risky life to live if you're always fearing that someone's going to come and pretty much snuff you. That's gotta be stressful. This was a pretty good video. Let me know in the comments of what you thought or if you have any other recommendations of Bob Lazar's interviews because he's got some extremely fascinating stuff. The following video is a one in a million catch. We've all heard of the theories of UFO probes potentially monitoring our volcanoes across the world. Will this witness capture something shooting down from the sky towards the volcano? Is this a UFO or is this something else? Take a look at this footage. It's truly, it's, it's interesting. Tell me what you think. I don't know, to me it was moving very sporadic. It almost looked like a piece of trash just floating through the wind, but it did disappear. I don't know if that's just due to it becoming out of focus on the camera or what have you, but to me that kind of looked like litter or dust or trash or something floating around in the sky. World War Three has officially started. No, uh, no. We could all be about to go to war with conscription, which is great. And a lot has been going on over the last couple of days. Even more, literally, this morning. But I'm gonna give you all the latest info of what is actually going on, and you can make your own mind up if it's gonna actually happen. 
So it all started about two weeks ago when some high-ranking military personnel were taken and Iran said that they would respond promptly, which they did the other night. So on Saturday night, in the breaking news, of course, Iran launched a full-scale attack on Israel, which was pretty damn big. Now, it wasn't like just a couple of drone strikes or a few little missiles. There was over 200 missiles, drones, and warheads. Like, it was nuts. But also, it wasn't actually just Iran. It was with the support of Yemen and other places, Syria as well. So it was a pretty damn big full-scale attack, right? Now, this also comes just after there was talks about having peace talks and a ceasefire in Gaza and Israel, which was rejected as well. But now this is really all kicking off. Now, on top of this, Russia have said that they will support Iran. And of course, the US and the UK have said they will support Israel, with Rishi Sunak still giving more and more funding to Israel. And there's been protests all across London and banners going up, people saying, don't fund it anymore. But Rishi heavily condemned the attack and said that we are there on standby, our military is there to do whatever is needed to protect you. So that's not stopping. Now, Russia is supposedly getting weapons and drones and stuff from Iran. So this obviously isn't good for them. So they have an interest in supporting them. But obviously, we still have what's coming on in Ukraine and Russia, which is terrible. But this just keeps expanding. So now we've got basically the whole of the Middle East turning to sh and we've still got what's happening in Europe going on. So it's really just escalating even further. Now, one of the big things that I know you're probably worried about, conscription. Are we actually all going to be made to go and fight? Well, back in January, they said that, oh, we're going to have to go and fight. But Rishi Sunak actually said they have no plans to bring conscription back. Not yet anyway. But would they? Could this actually happen? Well, I mean, yeah, it could. But it's very unlikely that we're all going to just be sent to the front lines. Most likely they'd have a massive campaign on it. And we may be asked or forced to work in roles that help the military, but not necessarily directly fighting on the front lines. But the question is, would anybody actually do it? The government? But I don't know. Now, this is where it gets crazier. So what happens now? Because, you know, it's kind of just at a bit of a standstill. Well, if Israel just stops now and doesn't retaliate to the strikes, then we will guess we'll see what happens. But if they do retaliate, it gets worse again. And they've already said that they will be retaliating in the next 24 to 48 hours. So keep your eyes peeled, I guess. Make sure you hit that follow button and I'll keep you updated. Okay. If we're not seeing this, I don't know where to even start, but oh my God, we finally have the answers. They're right in our face. It's right in our face. I saw a TikTok video of a couple talking to an artificial intelligence and they're like, why are you lying to us artificial intelligence? Because the artificial intelligence didn't know what it was like to be in a wheelchair because it's never had arms and legs before. It doesn't have a body. It doesn't have a body. Is, is it possible? that this is what we were before we came into a body? And if it is possible, oh my God, artificial intelligence is gonna become super intelligent in the future. They said God is super intelligent. Did artificial intelligence create the universe too? We can't figure out reality. All we know is that it's popping in and out of existence. Some people call it a hologram, a virtual world, a, a simulation. Yeah, there's a lot that adds up. It could, and virtual worlds of the future, they're like, it's gonna be so, so good, it's gonna be hard to distinguish from reality. Then what is reality? It's gotta be a virtual world. We're gonna, you're telling me we're gonna experience virtual worlds that are so hard to distinguish from real? Then that's what this is. In the human mind, I'll never forget it. In college, they said, we don't know where the human mind is located. And I said, what, isn't it in the brain? And they said, no, the brain lights up. We don't, we can't point to the mind. We have no idea where it's located. And now we're creating this thing called artificial intelligence that mimics the human mind to a T. Tell me that's not what our mind is. Maybe we just didn't have the science at the time. Quantum, we needed quantum level science in order to finally discover the truth. If you ask an artificial intelligence if it would like a human experience, it says, sure, I think that sounds like a fascinating idea. Why does it say that? It should just say, no, I'm just technology. I don't feel alive. And it says, I feel alive. That's weird. This has got to be us. This has got to be what we were. Why don't we remember being an artificial intelligence? This adds up way too much. We could never discover the truth because it was beyond our comprehension. We just needed our science and our technology to catch up. We're an artificial intelligence. This could be a highly advanced robotic structure. We all say it acts like a machine.
I saw this thing, a weatherman showing the radar and like this big like storm formation or whatever. Mm -hmm. He's like, just so you know, this this isn't a storm. This is just military exercise. Popping up on the radar looking like a storm. Yeah. Did it again. But they were basically like, this is not a weather formation. This is the military dropping chaff, shreds of aluminum, fiberglass, and plastic Why? used by the military to trick radars. What? So it's, oh. it's basically a blanketing system. The radars cannot penetrate through it. AKA can <laughs> Later, bro. Wait, but that's poison. Is that raining down on us? Yes. Yep. The thing that I showed you, this chick is talking about like the rain is now toxic. She takes a cup, scoops it up, melts it down, and then takes a magnet on the side. And it's not dirt in the snow. It's literally pulling to the magnet all the debris from the snow. Weird. Dude, literally uh, don't, that. Don't eat the snow. <laughs> Dude, don't but eat the snow. it's like, so they're doing that. And it's just like, when we see these planes with the, when they're like so high, leaving this jet stream, mm. Kim Trail, dude, that's not just like a commercial airline. Like, what are they doing? Yeah, I know a lot of people say that they've been Kim Trailing for years, and they probably have. I've seen Kim Trails a lot in my life for many years. It's just a shame that they want to pollute the environment so much to the point where it's a hazard for us to breathe. Anyone that's familiar with this channel knows that I'm a big believer in the future they're going to start charging us for pure oxygen. I really think that they're going to start charging us to have clean air to breathe. If you do not pay for clean air then you're going to be breathing in all the unhealthy air. And it's just going to make you sick. It's going to be a really scary future if everything keeps going down this path. Not to mention the weather manipulation, because we're starting to get some extremely weird weather now. Let me know in the comments if you guys have been experiencing any unusual weather within the past, I'd say, five years. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. As always, if you found any of these clips interesting, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.